We have a wonderful night in store. For those who don't know me, I'm Rabbi Jack Dermer. This is our cantor, Scott Sokol. And it is really a delight to welcome guests from Old Westbury and Beth Shalom and Shelter Rock. We have joining us tonight Rabbi Stanger and Rabbi Cohen, Rabbi Rosenthal, Rabbi Resnick, who's here as well, Cantor's Barnoy and Cantor Sokol, Cantor Flegelman, our Cantor Emeritus is here tonight. That's a wonderful thing. And Cantor Caravani and Cantor Galler. Wow, that's a minion of clergy people, just about. So you know you're in for a treat. It's my pleasure now to call upon Rabbi Martin Cohen of Shelter Rock Jewish Center to lead us in the teaching for tonight. I know it's going to be a wonderful teaching to tee us up in this very spiritual and holy evening, and then we'll move into Slichot. Rabbi Cohen, welcome. Happy you're here. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Rabbi Dermer. Uh, I'm going to teach a text tonight that it's being uh, distributed into the room. I'll give an introduction while they're distributing them, and uh, we'll take it away from there. In our culture, in our world, uh, anxiety and worry uh, have a very negative balance for everybody. If a child is deemed overly anxious, they send the, the poor child to a therapist or even to a psychiatrist to, to get better organized. And even adults who feel themselves racked with anxiety often seek counseling to allay their anxieties. Uh, there's nothing good about being an anxious person or being weighed down by worry. Uh, on my uh, source sheet tonight, I, I selected my, three of my favorite quotes, one from Louis Armstrong, grab your coat and grab your hat, leave your worries on the doorstep, just direct your feet to the sunny side of the street. And everyone knows the song. It couldn't be more popular. It's, uh, the sentiment couldn't be more universal. Uh, and what, uh, what Louis Armstrong was saying is uh, just uh, drop your worries where you are, cross over into the sunlight, be a happy person, as though that were all were, were required. Uh, Alfred Nobel, uh, also known to everybody, is the uh, sponsor of the prize. Worry is the stomach's worst poison. Uh, Walt Disney, also known to all, worry is a waste of imagination. So and that, I think that proves pretty clearly my point. Worry, anxiety uh, are, uh, are negative things, not, certainly not something that anybody wants, and le less, least of all, that any normal person would cultivate if they weren't already possessed of. But that brings me to my lesson for tonight. I'd like to teach a, a, a section of one of the most famous books about Shushuva by Rabbeinu Yonah. Uh, Rabbeinu Yonah deserves more f to be more famous than he really is. I'll give you a brief introduction. He was born, uh, his date of his birth is not known, although he died in 1264, uh, so he probably d was born around the year 1200. He lived born in Gerona in Spain, in Castilla. Uh, became already as a young man a great rabbi, well known, uh, and he and his teacher led the charge against Rambam, against Maimonides. When Rambam published his Moray Nevuchim, The Guide to the Perplexed, uh, there were many traditionalist rabbis who were aghast at the fact that Rambam dared to weigh Jewish philosophical ideas against the Muslim ones, particularly ones that were, uh, that were popular in the Muslim world at the time. Uh, they felt that that was derogatory to Judaism and unnecessary, and they recommended that his books be banned. Uh, when Rabbeinu Yonah was transferred or found a job in a pulpit in Paris in France, uh, he sought the help of the Gentile authorities to gather up all the copies of the Moran of Uchim he could find and make a huge bonfire in the Place de la Concorde to destroy them. Uh, this was a bit, uh, a bit over the top. Uh, about 12 years later, when the the uh, Catholic authorities determined that it was so much fun having bonfires that they collected 24 cartloads of Talmud volumes and burnt them in the Place de la Concorde. Uh, it finally dawned on Rabbeinu Yona that he had made a huge error of judgment in seeking redress from, from the church uh, for what is an, essentially an eternal Jewish matter. And for that day on, he resolved to plumb the depths of the concept of teshuva, of repentance, to repent himself of the, the unspeakable deed that he personally participated in, which was the destruction of Rambam's books. Uh, he made an oath to uh, visit Rambam's grave in Tiberia, in Tiberias, in Israel, uh, and to prostrate himself on the grave to beg forgiveness, but he never quite got there. Uh, he, was de he was detained in different places in Spain, and eventually he, he never left. Became a rabbi in, in um, Toledo, a city in Spain, and uh, there he lived for the rest of his life 
and died of a, some terribly painful disease, which he attributed to having failed to keep his word to visit the Rambam's grave in Tiberia. And while he was there in Toledo, he composed what is probably one of the two or three most important works about tshuva written. There's a whole literature about tshuva, uh, unfortunately unknown to most, uh, rich, interesting books. Uh, uh, Rabbeinu Hameiri's book, The Chibur al HaTshuva, Rambam's own Hilchot Tshuva, The Laws of Tshuva, part of the Mishnah Torah, uh, lots of other important books, and among them Rabbeinu Yonah's book, Sha'arei Tshuva, uh, published first in the, uh, which has the distinction, although it doesn't have anything to do with Rabbeinu Yonah himself, uh, of being one of the very first Jewish books to be published. Uh, after Gutenberg invented the printing press in the 1460s, uh, Hebrew language printing got off the ground quickly. By the year 1500, there were over 100 Jewish books that had been printed. And one of the first of them was Rabbeinu Yonah's book, uh, Sharei Tshuva. Uh, it's a wonderful book. It's in, it's in the type of Hebrew that anyone who knows uh, even Hebrew, uh, in, even not fluently, uh, could understand easily. Uh, it's often printed in Israel in editions with nekudot, with dots, to help people who are just learning Hebrew to read the book. Uh, I have several editions at home, and I have, I have not passed the high holiday seasons in, in many, many, many years without spending at least some time reading in Rabbeinu Yonah and weighing his thoughts. So I thought I would teach you a bit of his topic, uh, a bit from his book today, because it's so, it's so meaningful to me and so little known outside of uh, the, the world of people who ponder medieval Jewish texts. Uh, and the, le the lesson that I'd like to teach is taken from the fifth part, uh, in which he takes on this idea of worry. Uh, in our world, as I said, nothing is, could, be, could be less desirable than being weighed down with worry or anxiety. The, 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 uh, the, uh, as I said before, if you, if you feel overly anxious, uh, people often seek help. Rabbeinu Yonah would have been completely unfamiliar with that concept. Uh, he writes, worry is an essential element in the whole process of doing tshuva. In other words, if you're not worried, then you're not doing it properly. Uh, you have no way... The, 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 basis of tshuva is this deep sense of remorse and regret for, for, for deeds now regretted in the, in, in the, in the, uh, in the part, as part of the whole Elul process of, of cheshbon ha-nefesh, of weighing your deeds. Uh, you, are, you identify mistakes you made, shortcomings, moral shortcomings, uh, slips of the tongue, uh, mistakes you made, both uh, moral and legal, and you regret them deeply. And you hope that Hashem uh, forgives you. But there's no actual way to know if you've been forgiven. And when we stand in prayer on, on the holidays and we beat our breasts and pray for, pray for slicha and mechila from God, uh, there's no actual way to know what the verdict is. You, you know, Barosh Hashanah Yikatevun means uh, we imagine our verdicts being written, but none of us gets to peek into the big book. And therefore, nobody knows what the, what the verdict is. And that's why Rabbeinu Yonah says you should be worried, very worried. Worry is an essential element in the process of tshuva because it's essential that one worry acutely about the possible punishment that one might have to endure if one fails to atone for one's sins by doing tshuva in their regard. That's clear enough. In this regard, worry, the Hebrew word de'aga, a modern Hebrew word too, is the counterpart of regret. He uses the word yagon, I've translated as regret, in that the latter is focused on past suffering while the former is focused on the future, on punishment made that yet to come. And yet another reason to cultivate worry as a positive feature of the atonement process is because one should worry about the quality of one's tshuva, given that one has no actual way to know if one has self-afflicted sufficiently through one's fast or through the bitterness of one's remorse or through one's prayers to achieve the sought-after state of tshuva. This is true. This is my favorite part. This is true, by the way, regardless of how much attention you have prayed or cultivated regret, you never know if you've done enough. So that's an idea that most modern people, I think, will find uh, peculiar and, and worth pondering for a while. Uh, like all of you, I go to Shul on Yontif. I read the same words in the book that you do. I use the same moxa that everyone uses. I uh, say the al on Yom Kippur. I sing the Asham. Though I do, I, I do what everyone does. And I have this, this happy fantasy that as we reach the end of the season, that, that I've been cleansed of my sins, that, I, I've, uh, that I've been forgiven, that I, I imagine Hashem... To, you know, leafing through the Sefer HaChaim until, you, you know, a billion pages into it, he gets to my page, it says Martin S. Cohen on top, Rabbi Shelter Rock Jewish Center, and then on the bottom it says 5783, and I imagine Hashem checking it off, say, under the uh, life box, 
right? Saying, uh, okay, you know, he screwed up a little bit, but basically he did tshuva. Okay, one more year. Good luck. Uh, I imagine you all have the same fantasy. The, um, but it's important to step back from that fantasy and to remind yourselves that you don't actually know if that's true. I just made that up. How do I know what it says on my page in the Book of Life? How do I know how God has evaluated my tshuva process? Do I know if I've done it right? How, who in the world could, could, could know that? So that should engender not false pride and not arrogance, but a deep sense of ill ease, a deep sense of worry and anxiety. And to shun those things, uh, because in our culture, you're not supposed to be seized by ill ease or anxious. You're supposed to, be, have a, you're supposed to spend your life on the sunny side of the street. Uh, this is not an idea that Rabbeinu Yona would have found at all, uh, con an argument that Rabbeinu Yona would have found at all convincing. I'd like to read another passage to you. Indeed, one who considers the debt owed by humanity to the Creator and who understands that there is no bottom line to the depravity and stubbornness of, uh, uh, the typo here, stubbornness of which humanity is capable of bringing to the equation will also understand that no amount of effort will ever truly be enough to oblige the Almighty to forgive, that the tshuva process will always require a certain degree of unearned acquiescence on the part of God. That's a profound thought. Uh, my first idea was that you don't know if you've been forgiven. But this, is a, this, is, this second paragraph is not a repeat of the first. Let me, let me remind you, let me read that to you again. You, will under, you must understand that no amount of effort will ever truly be enough to oblige the Almighty to forgive, that you can't force God's hand. You, there's no amount of fasting, of davening, of praying, of, of, of suffering that can force God to do anything. God is all powerful. Our tradition teaches us that God is uh, hakol yachol. He certainly can't be forced by someone like you to uh, do anything at all, let alone to forgive sin. So yes, it's, it's reasonable uh, to imagine that God is, uh, is uh, mochel uh, v'soleach, a, a forgiving and, and uh, uh, an ever-patient God. Uh, but it's also true that none of us can say with certainty what, what uh, the verdict is. And there is no way to force God's hand. And to feel certain that you are right because you wish you were right uh, is not the most mature way to approach the process. You have no idea if you're right. And you certainly have no way to make God do anything at all. And therefore, the, 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 the results of those two thoughts or that you should have, be seized as you approach the holiday season with a, with a profound sense of, of, of ill ease. And that is what Rabbeinu Yona is, is promoting as, as, as good mental health. Not the absence of anxiety, but the presence of anxiety and even the cultivation of anxiety. The, um, I, see, I, I see that my time is uh, almost up, so I'll just uh, skate a little bit to the end of the text. Um, I'd like to read a passage that say, um, uh, on, the, on the reverse side of the page, those who truly embrace the concept of tshuva will also worry, and constantly, that they might fall prey to the same poor behavior for which they felt obliged to atone in the first place. And it was with this thought in mind that our sages said in ancient times, do not trust in yourself until the day of your death. In other words, uh, when you're about to die, then you can, then you can relax. Otherwise, you should, be, you should be very worried. And how much more it must it be true for people whose evil inclinations have already overcome them that they should worry constantly about giving into the same wicked urges that led them astray earlier on. And always also to work at fearing God and at praying that God serve as the bastion against the endless, endlessly aggressive onslaught of the Eight Sahara as it risks to come back with even greater force in the future. And this too is something endlessly to worry about. So, uh, I'll leave you with that thought. Uh, if any of us has sinned in the last year, which is to say all of us, uh, it's because of moral weakness. Very, very rarely do our sins, are the sin, our sins result of uh, ignorance of the law. Uh, I can speak personally, I don't mind. Uh, I almost never, uh, when I think of the things that I line up on during the month of Elul to regret and to, and to resolve to do better in the coming year, almost absent from my list are, th are, are things that I did because I was a, wasn't aware of the fact that they were wrong. Uh, like all of you, I do lots of things wrong. I walk by some poor person with his hand out asking for help when I uh, walk around in Manhattan, and I walk past them often, or I try not to, but occasionally I'm in a hurry, I don't, I'm nervous to take my wallet out, I don't want to start in with someone like that, and I just keep going. 
Uh, I know, and I, you don't have to explain to me that that's forbidden, that the Torah forbids you always to open your hand to a poor person who's reaching out in need. There's no one in this room that doesn't know that. But how often do we just not do it, not because we're unaware of the law, but because we lack the moral fiber to stand up and do the right thing, even though we know what it is. That's one example of many, many I could come up with for you. I don't plan to bear my entire soul to you, just a, a <laughs> tiny little piece of it. Uh, so what Rabbeinu Yona is saying is that before you get up on your high horse and congratulate yourself for the excellence of your tshuva, you should remind yourself that the reason you're doing tshuva in the first place is because of your own weakness, not ignorance, not, not some detail of the law that somehow eluded you, uh, but fully aware of what the right thing to do is. You didn't do the right thing. So to assume that that would never happen again, that you will never fall prey to your own moral weakness, uh, that is uh, just a little bit childish, I think. Uh, the reason you're doing tshuva in the first place is because you personally screwed up. And that uh, could certainly happen again. And to say you know with certainty that it will never happen again, it, I think Rabbeinu Yonah would characterize that approach as just a bit arrogant. Uh, better to set aside arrogance and to embrace ill ease and worry and anxiety and to go into the high holidays filled with nervous awe, trepidation, uncertainty, a bit of fear, and uh, with that attitude of, 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 of supreme ill-ease uh, to approach Rosh Hashanah, convinced that God will listen to our prayers, but at the same time also allowing in the back of our consciousnesses to take root the notion that we actually don't know that and that all we can do is pray to God for mercy and for forgiveness and then hope for the best. Thank you very much. Rabbi, Dermot, Rabbi Cohen, I love, Rabbi listening. I love listening to you speak, and you gave us a dose of honesty and humility that uh, we need to bring into this season. These aren't just words, folks. This is uh, spiritual work that we need to be focused on. So thank you so much for that teaching. How about another Yeshua Koach, everybody? Erev Tov, everyone. Uh, really a pleasure to be together. Um, we are going to begin our Tfilot for Slichot today. Uh, on page two of your Slichot books, the Ashrei. Ashrei, Ashrei, Vetecha, Od Yalnu Chasela. Sadiq Adonai Bechol Verachal Vechasid Bechol Masav Karov Adonai Lechol Korav Lechol Asher Yikra'u Vemet Retzon Yerav Son Yreaviasa, Vet Shavatam, Vet Shavatam, Vet Shavatam, Yishma, Vyoshihem, Vyoshihem, Shomer, Shomer Adonai, Et Kolo Havav, Et Kolo Havav, Yet Korra Shaim Yashamit Tilat Adonai Daber Pi Vivarek Kol Basar Shem Kol Shol Yolam Vahed Vanak Nul Varek Yaha Meata Ve'ad Olam Amen. Amen. 
Continue with Lechunuranana, <coughs> the Slechot Lechunuranana, found on page 10. Lechunuranana, Ladonai, Nari, Aletzu, Hishenu, Nekadama, Fanav, Betoda, Vizemira. Mushpat mechon kisecha Chesed ve'emet yikadmu fanecha Asher yachtav nam tiksod Bevet Elohim nalech beragesh Asher lo'yam ve'u asahu Ve'yabeshet yadav yatsaru Asher biyado nafesh kol chai Beruach kol besari So we come to Hanashama Lach in the middle of page 10. The uh, writer of this uh, uh, piyut says, Our soul is God and so is our body, the haguf, soul and body, meaning all of us, every fiber of who we are, we are created to serve God. So if we take the word Neshama and just do a little play on it, and read it as nishima, as a breath, by adding just the yud in that, we take all of our breath, who we are serving God. So I'm going to ask everyone to rise, and we're going to do, if anyone does yoga or meditation, anything like that, you are used to this kind of breathing, to do a four-second breathe in, hold for four seconds, and breathe out, maybe close your eyes, connecting ourselves with our slichot prayers. So, everyone ready? Great. 
So breathe in. Hold. And breathe out. Hanesham Alach. Please be seated. Thirteen attributes of God's mercy. We repeat them again and again and again. We want God to be on the side of mercy as we call out through the season. The Kabbalists speak about two sides in God's being, a side of strictness and judgment and intensity and righteous indignation, and a side of compassion and love and forgiveness and grace. We speak about Avinu Malkenu this season, a father figure and a kingly figure. It's the kingly figure that's strict and intense. It's the parental figure that loves us and is gentle with us. And in fact, the word Rachum, which we're going to chant, compassion, many point out, is related to the word Rechem, which means womb. It's not just a father figure, but that God is like a mother holding us in a womb, nourishing us, loving us. Give you one other insight before we chant and rise. Erech apayim. How is Erech apayim usually translated? We say it so many times. 
slow to anger, right? Erech Apayim talks about God's face. Erech, a length, and Apayim, face. What does it mean that God has a long face? It's a wild thought. The commentators say that when we talk about Erech Apayim, we imagine God taking a deep breath. Ah, kind of like we just did, right? All together. Why is God taking a deep breath? Well, God looks down at humanity, at all that service, at all that we're doing, at all of our private mistakes, and God sometimes needs to take that breath. But it's a God of patience. And so I'll just remind us that on this journey of teshuva that we're all on, be patient with yourself. If you've made a mistake in 5781 and in 5782 and you're getting frustrated and you're ready to give up, be patient. Keep trying. This journey of teshuva is a journey. And if God's patient with us, I think we can be patient with ourselves. Let's rise. ודרך תשובה אורתה, גדולת רחמך וחסדך. תזכור היום ובכל יום לזרע ידידך, תאפן אלינו ברחמים. I'm <laughs> Shuv <laughs> Ve <laughs> Salah, the Rav 
You may be seated. We go now to page 26. 26, and Hinta Karavani is going to teach you a new melody. <coughs> and usually in Israel, on the Elul months, all the channel of the radio, at least once or two, three times a day, we are singing this. The same thing like we're singing Avinu Malke, but this is different because it is Faradi melodies. It's go like this. Chatanu lefanecha rachem alenu. Simple. Chatanu lefanecha Okay, you're hiring, you're coming to be my choir on the high holidays. Adon aselichot bochen levavon gole amukot dover sedakot ha. Flaot, Vatik Banechamot, Zoher Beritavot, Choker Kelayot. Metiv la beriot, yo de ya conistarot, covejabonot, lo vece da cot. You can clapping, ha ata. Alenu male ze achuyot no ratehilot zole achavonot o ne betzarot ha. Chatanu lefanecha rachem And the last one Poel yeshuot Tzofe atidot Kore hadorot Roche vefaravot Shomea tefilot Tamim deot Chata lefanecha rachem alenu. Chata nu lefanecha rachem alenu. Thank you very much. Cantor Karavani. just want to take a moment. Uh, Adon Haslichot means Master of Forgiveness. Uh, the title, of course, of this uh, ceremony, the week leading up to uh, Rosh Hashanah, in this case, it's a little bit more than a week. Uh, some years, depending on Rosh Hashanah Falls, it's only about four days, but uh, sometimes it could be an entire week or more. Uh, slichot actually is from the Hebrew word, slicha, which means pardon me, Excuse me, it's actually a word, unlike a lot of liturgical words, which is still employed to this day in modern Hebrew. If you're in Israel, you know, you're trying to pass someone on the street, you know, slicha, in fact, if you're in Israel, 
probably more often than not, they won't say that. But the <laughs> idea being, you know, excuse me, pardon me. Uh, but it could also mean asking for forgiveness, right? Penitence, so to speak. And of course, we have to remember, with just like the Slichot service, and uh, every morning when we're supposed to recite these additional Slichot prayers, and throughout the High Holy Days themselves, when we're asking for forgiveness, when we're asking to be pardoned, it's between ourselves and God. But to our fellow person, all the prayer and fasting in the world doesn't accomplish that. We actually have to go to them personally and ask for forgiveness. That's why it's also custom to go to people. Ideally, you should do it during the entire month of Elul. A lot of people wait until just before Rosh Hashanah, or in many cases just before Yom Kippur, to ask for forgiveness. Sometimes people do it tongue-in-cheek. Sometimes they're very sincere when they do it. Um, but this is the time to make amends between both ourselves and God, between both ourselves and our fellow person. And my own daughter said something very interesting to me. Uh, if you spend the year showing gratitude and thanks and often taking the time to thank people and be proactive in your appreciation, the more you thank people, the less you'll have to most likely ask for forgiveness or for pardon. You know, an example she gave is rather than say, oh, God, I'm so sorry I'm late, which I mean, probably as Jews is something we can all relate to, say, thank you for waiting for me. Thank you for being here even though I was tardy. And uh, just like with God, right, we always have to give acknowledgments and thanks. And uh, throughout the year, that's what a lot of the prayers are about, whereas on the High Holidays, they're about for forgiveness. We should also think about acknowledging our fellow person as much as possible, because the idea being moving forward into this next year, the more we thank them, the more we show our appreciation, probably the less we'll have to ask for forgiveness later on. Thank you, Rabbi. I'd like to add a word about this particular recitation we're about to embark on, on page 30, the Motza'e Menucha, page 30. The Motza'e Menucha means at the end of Shabbat, so here we are at the end of Shabbat, and um, first of all, this piyut is a highlight of the Sadiqot service tonight. That's why it's sort of in the middle of the book. It's one of the big highlights. And musically, you'll see that it's a highlight with a refrain that you'll be able to join in. Um, but there's something special I like about this particular piyut and the wording in the first three lines. We say Sadiqot every day during the loop, in the morning, during the morning prayers, especially in the Sephardi community. They, I was speaking to someone from the Sephardi community in our temple, and uh, he enlightened me that they have in, in Great Neck some synagogues that start their services every morning during Elo, 4.30 in the morning, and they go until 7.30. Any of you have been at 4.30 in the morning? We have one. So that's quite a commitment, every morning for three hours. Uh, we come here for one hour. But what I like about the fact that it's been Motza'e Menucha, that we come for Slichot at night, is at night is like when we go to sleep and we're, we're really, we feel like children. The children of God. In the morning when we wake up, we feel you know, energized, ready to go to work. At night it's different. It's right before you go to bed. You feel like a child. You feel like you need, you need some comfort as you lay down to sleep, right? You need a lullaby. And this, uh, this piyut is sort of like a lullaby. Uh, and we say in it, Lishma el harina ve'el hatfila. Listen to the song and to the prayer. And there are those people who love song, and there are those people who love prayer more. And this comes to teach us that prayer and song are the same. That we have to sing our prayers and Pray while we sing. So here is your opportunity. Oh. 
לשמוע אל ארי, לשמוע אל הנינה ואל התפילה, לשמוע, לשמוע, לשמוע אל ארי, לשמוע אל ארי, ואל התפילה, לשמוע, לשמוע, לשמוע אל ארי, לשמוע אל ארי, ואל התפילה. Sir. 
Hore talon lomar shlosh esre Zekhalan wayom berit shlosh esre Kimo shodat alay anav mikhedem Kimo shekatuv Vahayir dar noy b'anachon Vahid yatsay v'moshaham Vahikra v'shem Adonai Vahyavol dar noy al panachav Vahikra Please remain standing as we are going to uh, have, first of all, a word about Shabbat <coughs> and then we'll join the Shabbat So Shabbat Koleinu, the beautiful prayer that we are about to recite, continues the theme of many of this evening's prayers of hoping that God hears our voice and praying for God to hear our voices. Shema koleinu Adonai Eloheinu. Hear our voices, Adonai our God, and be merciful to us. Sometimes when I hear this prayer, it calls to mind for me an image that blew me away the first time I first read it and continues to blow me away whenever I see it. It's from a poem by Israeli <coughs> poet Yehuda Amichai of blessed memory. It's a very stark image. It talks about the numbers tattooed on a Holocaust survivor's arm. And Amichai says, those numbers are God's phone number and there's no one on the other end of the line. Cuts me like a knife whenever I read that. And I understand Amichai's anger <coughs> and his pain and the things that made him write that line. I want to suggest, though, uh, another metaphor, perhaps, for our communication with God, maybe to update uh, what Amichai said a little bit. Um, a very 2022 metaphor for our communication with God. Rather than thinking of God as having a phone number, Sometimes I think of us as being in a kind of online communication with God, a metaphor that springs to my mind because so much of our communication is online these days. So for those of you that might text or do instant messaging, did you ever have that experience where you text somebody and you don't get a response, but you see three dots indicating that they're responding, but you don't know what their response is going to be? So with apologies to Amichai, this is the way that I like to think about our communication with God these days, and it gives me a little bit of comfort, thinking that perhaps God does hear us. There is somebody on the other end of that communication, and God is thinking of a response. 
God is intending to respond to us. God is listening with love to what we're saying. We just don't know what that response is yet. So I pray that as we approach the high holidays, we will keep in our minds and our hearts the faith to believe that God really does listen to us, and we will wait patiently and with confidence for God's loving response. We remain standing for Shema Kolenu, the bottom of page 38. Shema Koleinu Adonai Eloheinu Us verrochem Aleinu Aleinu Vekabel berrochamim Rachamim uvratzon Et filatenu Ashiveinu 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 Adonai Oh, 
One of the blessings of Slichot, and now I'm talking from the vantage point of, uh, of myself as a chazan, um, it's twofold actually. Uh, first of all, this is true for some people like myself. It's one of the rare services during the course of the year where I get to sing along with accompaniment, um, having been in traditional synagogues my entire life, which did not use accompaniment on Shabbat or Yom Tov. This is one of the rare occasions when I get to um, sing along with accompaniment on behalf of my colleagues, and I'm sure on behalf of all of you, I'd like to thank Cantor Ofer Barnoy for supplying us with accompaniment tonight. It's been uh, added, I, I can't say an added dimension, added multiple dimensions to our davening tonight. But there's another blessing um, of davening uh, for Slichot. Um, over the course of the year, a congregant uh, may be absent one particular Shabbat, only one particular Shabbat, and they're back the next Shabbat and they say, Chazan, last week I was at so-and-so congregation, have you ever been there? And I say, no, unfortunately I'm chained to the bima. I don't get out much. Um, so this is actually one of those rare occasions where I do get to go out and I can actually travel. Um, and I think it's a wonderful thing that I've uh, inherited coming to this community about five years ago. This is actually my sixth high holiday season in this area. Um, but the, the beauty in general is being able to attend um, services in other places, hear other chazanim, and learn from them. And I've had, the, I've had the privilege and the pleasure of learning from my chazanim in this community. I've taken back some melodies with me. And in turn, I have picked up a melody myself a few years back um, when I was able to attend different service. I'd like to share that with you. Um, I believe it's a very pretty melody and it's uh, pretty easy to pick up. Um, we sing it multiple times on page 46. If you don't get it in the first, uh, uh, it's, it's in uh, uh, lines, sets of four. If you don't get it in the first couple of sets of four, you'll certainly get it by the 38th set of four. <laughs> Mishana Lavram of Inu, Behar Homeria, who ya nehi nu. Mishana Lietzrak Pinoch in a card al Gabe Hamis Beach, who ya nehi nu. Mishana Liako Beveitel, who ya nehi nu. Mishan al Yosef bevet o asurim hu ya nehenu. Mishan al avotenu al yam suhuf hu ya nehenu. Mishan al Moshe bechorehiv hu ya nehenu. Mishan al Yaron b'amachta. Who ya nehenu? Mishan al Yaron b'amachta. Who ya nehenu? 
Misha Nolifin Chas, Pukumo Mito Hoida, Hu Yanehinu. Misha Nol Yoshua Bagil Gahal, Hu Yanehinu. Misha Nol Shmuel Bamitzpah, Hu Yanehinu. Mishana le David Shomo ben Obeirushalayim hu yaneinu Mishana le Eliahu behar akarmel hu yaneinu please join Mishana le Elisha beriho hu yaneinu Mishana le Yona bimehadagah Hu yaneinu, Mishana lechizkiyah melech Yehuda bechel yah. Hu yaneinu, Mishana lechanan ya Mishel vazar ya betoch kivshana eish. Hu yaneinu. Mishana le Daniel begovar yahot. Hu yaneinu, mishan al marchav yester b'shushan habirah. Hu yaneinu, mishan al yezra bagola. Hu yaneinu, mishan al chovat sarigim yachazidim yatmimim. Vehayesharim Hu yaneinu Thank you. At the top of page 48, uh, there is a paragraph for Hamana de Ane, and we're going to just sing together the last four words. Hashta <coughs> Bagala. It's a very nice Hasidic song that you can join in. <coughs> and it goes like this. Hashta Bagala, O Vizman Karib, O Vizman, O Vizman, O Vizman Karib, Hashta Bagala, Bagala Uvisman Kariv, Ashman Uvisman, Uvisman Kariv, Ashta Bagala Uvisman Kariv, Uvisman, Uvisman, Uvisman Kariv, Ashta, Ashta, Ashta Bagala Uvisman, Uvisman, Uvisman Kariv, Ashta, Ashta, Bagala. Uvisman, Uvisman, Uvisman Kariv, Ashta Bagala, Uvisman Kariv, Uvisman, Uvisman, Uvisman Kariv. I'd like to invite a good friend of mine, Sandy Berger, to sing with me, Shomar Yisrael, together with the rest of the Chazan. Uh, he's, uh, you know, quite a Chazan himself. We call him pseudo. Come sing here. At, at Shul, we call him pseudo. 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 pseudo Hazen. How are you? Good yourself. But he really loves it. He has <coughs> a, a great big heart for Hazanas and for songs. 48. And uh, here we go, Shomer Israel. Chavo. Ready? Shomer, Shomer Yisrael, Shemor Sherid Yisrael, 
Shomer, Shomer Yisrael, Shemo Sherid Yisrael. V'al Yehovah, V'al Yehovah Yisrael, V'al Yehovah, V'al Yehovah Yisrael, Ha'omerim, 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 Ha'omerim Shema Yisrael, Shomer, Shomer Goyecha, Shemo Sherid Amecha, Shomer, Shomer Goyecha, Shemo Sherid Amecha, V'yal Yehovah, V'yal Yehovah Goyecha, V'yal Yehovah, V'yal Yehovah Goyecha, Lam Yachad Yimeshimecha, Shimecha, Adonai Eloheinu Anayecha. Shomer, Shomer, Goy Kadosh, Shemo Sheri Am Kadosh. Shomer, Shomer, Goy Kadosh, Shemo Sheri Am Kadosh. V'yale Yehovah, Thank you. was waiting all night for that. Any of the rabbis introducing Abinu Malkinu? Okay, then we'll ask you to rise. Abinu Malkinu, you want to do it? It's sort of self-explanatory. We've all sung it since we were children. And, uh, of course, in this prayer, we ask Avinu, our father, Malkinu, our king, Chanenu Vanenu, be merciful unto us. Avinu Malkeinu, Chameinu Malkeinu, Avinu Malkeinu, Chameinu Vaneinu, Yehbanu Masi. Dark, the 
On behalf of all of us at Temple Beth Torah, all the rabbis, all the cantors, everybody, we wish you a Shana Tova. It should be a sweet year, a healthy year, a year filled with blessing for all of us and our families. Shana Tova. Umetuka.